Dr. Lyndon Smith, and Bill Kirchenbauer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Johnny. You know something I don't know? Is there a full moon or is this just a full audience tonight? Wow! I'm glad to see you all here tonight. I'm glad you could get sitters for your test tubes. Oh. Don't you like Friday night crowds? Yeah. Everybody is out, you know, yaha time. I'm this is the Tonight Show. I'm Johnny Carson, your friendly philosopher, and here is today's thought for the day. Death is nature's way to keep you from inhaling smog. <laughs> little thought there. But anyway, we're coming to you as usual as we have for how many years we've been out here now? Six years? Seven, going on Six seven years? Half. Six and a half years. We're in Burbank, not Hollywood. It says every night from Hollywood. We're in Burbank. Nice town, rather conservative. Well, it is, it doesn't swing too much. For example, if you go to the local sex emporium here in Burbank, you can buy a satin bedsheet with a picture of Senator Hayakawa on it. <laughs> I have a late report for you. I know you've been sitting here for a while. Late report just came in on, just, the, on the teletype. Yes, just tore it off. Uh, Anita Bryant just sent a telegram to England's Dr. Patrick Steptoe warning him not to manufacture any test tube homosexuals. <laughs> we have film at 11. How many of you know what today is? There's an anniversary today. You know what it is? No. Well, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Don't get hostile about it. I just brought it. It's the anniversary of World War I. First World War began on this day in 1914. You remember World War I? That was the war with the good songs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. War jokes just aren't too no. funny. They aren't playing too good lately. There's some good economic news for a change. Well, some good and some bad. The good news is that gold broke the $200 mark for the first time in some years. It's at a record high, but the dollar is at an all-time low. Now, do you know what this means? It means your mouth is now worth a fortune, but you can't afford to eat. <laughs> That's what it means. Okay. I don't say this so you feel uh, like I'm bragging. I don't worry about money anymore because I have a fantastic business advisor, shrewd man, bombastic Bushkin. <laughs> and I have, to be honest, enough money to last me the rest of my life. If I open a can of contaminated tuna tonight and wash it down with liquid protein, I do. <laughs> Did I tell you some of the things that Bushkin has yeah, put me into? No. Some shrewd investments. I own a used car lot, sell those, sells only used Pintos. <laughs> I have the Perrier water concession at Lourdes. <laughs> and I have a war surplus store on Rodeo Drive. <laughs> it has got me into some great things. I'm also, I'm also heavily in the show business. I represent Peter Sellers for everything except Pink Panther movies. <laughs> I have Roman Gabriel for football. I've got a lot of big athletes. Well, what else is happening? Politics is always good for a few chuckles. Obviously, you're going to be the judge of that, but let's find out. <laughs> you know already, candidates are making waves about running for president in 1980. Former President Gerald Ford was asked today, and he says, don't count me in, but don't count me out. And he's been stepping up his public appearances. I think Ford is getting ready to run. You know how I can tell? He just called General Motors and ordered a roll bar for his head. <laughs> Ronald Reagan, 
says he is considering visiting mainland China next year. Now, that's the latest indication of his seriousness in seeking the presidency. Um, and also, Ronnie says his intention is to move a little more to the center of things. <laughs> well, see, now, come on, Reagan's a rather ultra-conservative, but even if he moves to the center, he's still going to be just a little to the right of Darth Vader. <laughs> No, it looks like he's going to run a 19 Ronnie looks like a president, right? He talks like a president. He acts like a president. But if the American people wanted that, they'd have elected Gregory Peck. <laughs> okay, here's a... Excuse me, I tend to nod off sometimes during jokes. Are you a little scared every day when you pick up the papers to find out the latest food that you should not eat, according to the Federal Drug Administration? They come up with something every day now, another pesticide, another food that is bad for you that causes cancer. The Agriculture Department came out today and said that pesticides sprayed on carrots, yeah, carrots, have caused cancer in animals. That's all we need. Now when the rabbit dies, you don't know if your girlfriend is pregnant. <laughs> Maybe the rabbit just had lunch, who knows? We have a good show tonight. We have Mr. McLean Stevenson with us tonight. We have Charles Nelson Riley, Dr. Lyndon Smith, who's a famous baby doctor, little teeny baby doctor, yeah. No, come on, he's a... We've been doing that, we always get a laugh with that. He's a little teeny, well-known pediatrician, little baby doctor. And uh, Bill Kirchenbauer, who's a young comedian who is uh, kind of wild and crazy. I think you'll enjoy him. So thanks for coming, we'll be back with you. Ryan O'Neill is the driver. His reputation, the best wheel man in the business. My line of work is kind of hard to come by. Bruce Dern is the detective. His reputation, the toughest cop in the city. Maybe you ought to be afraid of me. Two men driven by their need to prove they were the best. Ryan O'Neill, Bruce Dern, Isabella Johnny, the driver, rated R. Now playing at a theater near you. Try some wheat checks, honey. No, thanks. They're so good. Yeah, I bet. And wheat is so good for you. Okay, okay. Hey, the wheat checks are good. They're smaller than I thought. Lighter than I thought wheat could be. Really tasty. Honey, do something for me. Anything. Let me have some wheat checks. Okay. People who don't like check cereals have never tried check cereals. Oh, hi there. This is probably the best looking crowd we have had in this show since last night. Okay, tell you what. We haven't been up in the audience for a while. It's always good to come up and say hello to you people. And um, we have some, do we have some good prizes tonight? Uh, so, so. <laughs> for somebody who can stump the band, any song at all, they will know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Would the convoy make a wrong turn or what? It's okay, it's safe. Bust them down, Buster. It's 10 4. Hi, right, what's your name? Alan Valeres. Where are you from, Alan? Seattle, Washington. Are you really? Yeah. What do you do up in Seattle? Teach music. Do you really? Yeah. You at public school or what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Beanbridge High School. What are you doing down here? Taking trumpet lessons. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that your main instrument? Yeah. What do you think of Doc? Wow. <laughs> As they say in musical circus. <laughs> Okay, what's the name of the song? Is it, no, this has got to be a legitimate song. It is. Okay. It's called The Island Song. The Island Song. Can these guys help me? Wait a minute. I don't no, know. Okay. No, wait, no, we'll find you out. Got, wait, Bobby, Bobby Bain has got it. We Bobby got it. Bobby, Bobby Bain. Bain's got The Island got Song. The Island. When I touch your hands. <laughs> That's not it, is it, Al? It's, oh, this actually has words. Yeah. Uh, this is the, uh, the rest of the troupe here? This is the trio. The trio, okay, fellas. Quartet, Quartet. pardon me. Quartet. <laughs> A mangier-looking group I never hoped to see. 
three, four, no. <laughs> you guys look like you're on the rodeo circuit or something. Is no. this, is, are the hats uh, symbolic of something? Disneyland. Frontierland. <laughs> you got these at Disneyland? Okay, I'll buy that. Are you all set? Yeah. What was this called? The Island Song? The Island Song. Okay. Near note. <laughs> Wait, what is that? What kind of is that? That's all you have left, is it? That's it. The horn died. Oh, the horn died. The horn died. <laughs> Sing me a song of the island. Sing me a song where the penguins play. Sing me a song of the island. Aloha, Aki, Akue, hey. There we go. Peace Orchestra, all right. You four will be taken by pickup truck. How would you like to go to the Los Angeles Playboy Club? Take it. I can see you fellas in there. No, we'll, uh, we'll get you all fixed up with the gal who will take care of you, huh? Great. Thank you very much. You take the young lady with you also? Oh, yeah. Okay, thank hey, you. Thank you. you. Hey, right on. Right on. Hey. Yeah. That's it. Get it together. Put it on. Right. Let it all hang out. Right on. Yeah, baby. Anybody else here? How about the blade races? Well, certainly, certainly. Mind standing up? You are? Uh, Mr. Uh, Johnny Green from England. Johnny Green? Aye. You know, there's a famous musician by the name of Johnny Green? I've heard of Hubie Green. Hubie Green? is a Hubie, Hubie Green, too. Yeah, he's the golfer, right? Johnny Green's a fine musician. Where are you from? Is he? You're from England? England aye. Where about in England? A place called Windsor, where the Queen lives. Well, certainly. I'm very familiar with that. Ha, ha, ha. You don't, you're, you're not suggesting you live near, with the queen, with the queen. Okay. What do you do in England, Mr. Green? Holiday. You holiday in England? I come to San Francisco. I went to Vegas. Now here. Uh -huh. Is this your first trip to our country? Yes, first time. What did you think of Las Vegas as an Englishman? Well, I find San Francisco is very hard work, the hills. In Las Vegas, you lose too much money. Los Angeles is all right. So you landed up here? Yes, I like it. What, what do you do uh, in Windsor? I work for Mars Candy Bars. Mars candy bars? Yeah. Good, good point. That's a 25 years. Really? Yeah. You have probably not seen our show at all. We're not uh, seen in England, are we? No. <laughs> <laughs> you seem happy somehow that we're not seen there. Is, that, yeah. Is this the very first time you've seen our show? Yes, first time. What do you think of it so far with what you've seen? I don't... Grand. Thank you very much. That's nice. What's the name of the song? The Blade and Racers. The Blearden... Blearden Races. The Blearden Races. The North, the North Country English song. The North Country English song. Uh, okay, we the Blearden Races. We got, we, we got it. Ed and I got it. Mr. Green says this is a North Country English song. Oh, wow. Can you do a few bars of that for us, Mr. Green? I'll try. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sing. Right. Hear the lads, you want to see the lasses. Gone in the longest Scotchy road to see the bleeding races. Gonna the longest scotch be roll to see the blade races. All the lads and lasses there, yeah. all the small and jazzes. Gonna the longest scotch be roll to see the blade races. Mr. Green, I know our two countries share a common tongue, but I didn't understand one word you said. I'm from the north of England. The northern of England. Well, it's nice to have you here. It's nice to have you here. We hope you enjoy your trip, and we have something nice for you here. A box of Mars bars. And, <laughs> and four tickets So next week's. No, we have dinner for four at Casa de Carlos. That's right out here in the valley in Woodland Hills. Thank you. And uh, have you got a couple friends with you? Yes. They're right over here. Fine, you can take them to dinner, and one, our gal will arrange it for you. Thank you. Have a nice, nice stay here, will you? Okay. Anybody else? Okay.
they don't mean it. They're all test tube guys. <laughs> What's your name? Donna Bruner. Where are you from, Donna? Springfield, Illinois. Springfield. Yeah. What, are you, what are you doing in Springfield? I'm an x-ray technologist. Are you really? Is that safe to have x-rays? I keep hearing that you shouldn't take too many x-rays. Um, now, be honest with me. You should be careful of it, but it's more harmful as you're younger, you know. Oh. Anything above 18, your risk decreases. I've often wondered, the doctor comes out and says it's harmless, and then he runs like hell and jumps over a three, <laughs> three foot thick lead wall, puts on a rubber suit and a pair of goggles, and, <laughs> and you hear this, mm. <laughs> you know, you're being sterilized right there. The doctor is over there. What do you do back there? Oh, you're an x-ray. I asked that, didn't I? <laughs> Shades of who do you trust? And how long have you been married? No, no. <laughs> what, do, what, do you, what are you doing out here? That's just a vacation? Yeah, we're just driving around, watching the Cubs lose. Yeah, okay. What's the name of the song? Tr uh, what was it called? <laughs> That's Ed all right. The McMahon Fight Song. The what? Ed McMahon Fight Song. No, the, see, uh, the Ed McMahon Fight Song. Yeah. Is this you, man with you, or is you he know? bothering you? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know he was with you. I just thought some stranger was making a move, and I saw a guy stood up behind you there. A Wait a minute. Oh, I know it. It's a legitimate it. song. It. The Ed McMahon Fight Song. Tried. This obviously is your uh, husband. your husband. Hi, how are you? Hi. Okay, you want to sing a little bit of it for us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me, I threw you there, didn't I? Right. Mm -hmm. That about right? Every golfer in Moline is hoping Ed McMahon keeps his quad cities open. His tourney, tourney is finer than any by Dinah. If he left, we would all be a moping. Oh, I didn't know you had a song. Hey. Again, we have dinner for four at Dillon's, a discotheque in Westwood Village. You'll have fun out there. That's kind of a swinging place, huh? We'll come back and do some more. We have, yeah? Hi, how are you? Good to see you. My cord isn't long enough, among other things. <laughs> These are the blueprints for an automotive revolution. This is the J.C. Penny shock absorber. Its unique patented metering pin adjusts the ride automatically while you drive. So you get the control of heavy duty shocks when the going gets rough, and the ride of original equipment shocks when the road is smooth. And if it ever fails, return it. We'll replace it free for as long as you own your car. The J.C. Penny shock absorber. It's the last shock absorber your car will ever need. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Pia Zadora. Love is made for lingering, and that's what lovers do. Oh, stolen kisses, candlelight, and Dubonnet for two. Next time, Dubonnet, red or blonde, the French idea of a cocktail. Dubonnet for two. Parlez-vous, Dubonnet? The French idea of a cocktail since 1846. there. Anybody else have a song now? What? Okay. Lady whose blouse keeps falling down here. I know when we start coming up here, you start doing that right away. Hi, who are you? I'm Betty Woodring. You're Betty Woodring. Where are you from, Betty Woodring? Helena, Montana. Helena, Montana. Yeah. That's the capital, isn't it? Yeah. What do you do back there? Work in a plant nursery. You raise flowers and stuff like that. What are you doing out here? On vacation. On vacation. What have you seen so far? Oh, just the ocean, mostly. <laughs> Hard to miss. Very big out there. <laughs> if you go west, you're going to be right into it. What's the name of the song? The Underwear Song. The Underwear Song. Ah. This I'm could be dangerous. Doc, you know that? This could be... Oh, I got Doc a key it. of E. Doc's got it. Oh, they itch and they shift and they move That 
darkest, freakier times. <laughs> Can you do a few bars of that? This is a decent song, isn't it? Because we have a, a very high-class uh, standard of hold here. <laughs> Once I went a-swimming where there were no women down beside the sea. So no one was there, took off my underwear and hung it on a tree. <laughs> dove into a water like a pharaoh's daughter, dove into the sea. Someone caught me there, stole my underwear, and left me with a smile. Aww. Okay, we'll pay off on that. Uh, dinner for four. Have you heard of the famous Marina Del Rey? No. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it's not as famous as I thought it was, but... It's kind of a, a swinging place. A lot of singles live out there. It's right next to the beach. And it's uh, Marriott's Lorelei Place in Marina Del Rey. Dinner for four. Thank you. will really have... What? One more. Thank you very much. What? Oh, you're kidding. Oh, sure. Mm. What? Um... I don't know what it... Oh, oh, I better go. Oh, come on. Here's young man. Okay. Hi. How are you? What's your name? Steve Smith. Where are you from, Steve? New York. Okay. That's your real name? Steve Smith? Right. You must be murdered if you check in a hotel. You go up there, Steve Smith. Oh, sure, sure. What do you do, Steve? I'm a student. A student, where at? At Binghamton in upstate New York. Hey, good for you. Good for you. What's the song? Um, it's, it's an old English folk song <laughs> called Gingangooly. An old English folk song called Gingangooly? You know Ging wait, wait a minute. One you lady. Don, you know that? Don, 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 Don Ashworth. That. Don, Don, Don Ashworth, who's an old English uh, man himself. <laughs> Gingangooly, Don. <laughs> Got it upside down. Upside down. It's upside down. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. I think Don is stashing something in the flute there. What? No, I don't think so. How does that go? That's an old English. Uh, yeah, it was taught to me by an old English folk. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it goes like this. King gang gooly 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 watcha, king gang goo, king gang goo, king gang gooly 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 watcha, king gang goo. Did you do the choreography? No, they Look at these people. These people are doing the choreography to this song. You sing it and we'll watch. King gang gooly 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 watcha, king gang goo, king gang goo, king gang gooly 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 watcha, king gang goo. Hey la, hey la, say la. That's, that's the end of the song? Looks like a very bad rash or something, I mean. A uh, uh, scout? It's a Boy Scout song. That's an old English... These people from England say that's an old uh, English Boy Scout song. Right. Some people in the Royal Navy taught it to me. Well, I didn't know that. Did you see what you learn if you stay around here long enough? All righty, we have dinner for four at the Sandcastle at Paradise Cove out of Malibu. You got a couple of friends with you? Thank you, Steve. Have a nice time out here. We'll do this. We'll be right back with McLean Stevenson. Thank you. Okay, bye. Oh, you have fun, fun, fun with the handle made by Kodak. Have instant fun with the handle. Kodak's lowest price instant camera. Nothing to focus. Just aim, shoot, and up pops what nobody else can give you. Bright, brilliant color by Kodak. And after all, isn't color the way to choose an instant camera? Have fun with the handle. All the kids do. Even kids like us. <laughs> and you have fun, fun, fun with the handle made by Kodak. Fun, fun, fun. If Honda designed cars the way most everyone else does, you might not be as comfortable. But at Honda, all of our engines and drive shafts sit sideways. So you don't have to. Now, isn't that simple? Honda, we make it simple. Okay, welcome back to our show. We have a little show tonight. Our guests tonight are McLean Stevenson, Charles Nelson Riley, Dr. Lennon Smith, little baby doctor. Little and oh, come on. And Dr. Bill. <laughs> doctor, not Dr. Bill, just Bill. Just plain Bill. Kirchen Bauer, just plain Bill. <laughs> On Monday night, I should mention before we continue, uh, Bob Newhart will be here, and his guests will be Bernadette Peters, Susan St. James, Harry Chapin, Jay Leno, and Alan Funt. And on Tuesday night, we have one of our better shows, mm -hmm. we like to say, and uh, 
Robert Blake is on that particular show. There he is. He was, uh, mad as usual that night. And Mr. Burst Mustin, oh, who's a delightful man, yeah. Marsha Mason, and a long distance runner, Marty LaCorey, is with us. Hmm. So that's on uh, Tuesday and Bob on Monday. And oh, wow, I want to mention something about Doctor. You're going to be gone this weekend, aren't you? Right. Uh, Doc, on Monday, July 31st, Doc will be in Kansas City at the Starlight Theater yeah. in concert with Linda Hopkins. Yeah. That should be for one week. One week, yeah. That should be some kind of show. Mm. Doc is super, and so is Linda. My first guest, what can I say about him that he hasn't said about himself? Uh, <laughs> no, McLean is what, a nice, easygoing nice, fellow easy. from Labor. the Midwest, laid back, uh, Midwestern part of the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's going to be starring, he has a new television series called In the Beginning, which will premiere this September, as they say, on another network. Oh. Well, what's, those are the breaks. Where's we have, still have Sermonette. You <laughs> welcome McLean Stevenson. I did not Thank know you. they made a wash and wear tux. <laughs> Now, dig a little snicker, if you will. I popped 4250 for this sucker. What's go are you going to a party tonight, or what? You mean one of those big-time Hollywood galas? Well, I'll tell I've, you never the truth. Seen, I've never seen you in a tuxedo in my life. Well, I'm not going to one of those things. Those $250 plate dinners, that's you right. get four tickets for $1,000 to go honor somebody that's made $5 million that year. <laughs> um, I just, uh, I can't see doing that. You got a point. I'm trying to find the bill here. Comes to... Uh, this is a rental job? Yeah, this is 30... I guess I should unbutton this when you sit. There you yeah. go. Uh, thirty-four fifty on the tuck, six on the shoes, $2 for sweat and stain deposit. Uh, <laughs> Get that back if there's if no If you race. don't sweat, of course. I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> I... This is, come on, let me see. What's well, true? Statements of McLean Studios. So I read it so. today. I'm not absolutely going nowhere. A big night for me is to go out to Van Owen and Van Nuys at a Taco Bell drink beer with Harvey Corman and talk to high school girls. <laughs> uh, I'm, uh... I just, I really, I rented this tonight. I, I've lost, if you haven't noticed, 37 pounds. I was going to say, you are... Now, I hosted the show, I think it was on the 17th, and they tell me, I don't remember, because when you hit the star with a bad monologue, you know, you don't know what you're doing. Um, it was the 18th. No, it wasn't. Was it? No, it was the 17th. You were well, right. it doesn't you were really 17th, matter. The 17th of July, you're right. But they tell me, I'm not sure, I had this Bozo the Clown sport coat on, because I was really getting down to the bottom of the wardrobe, <laughs> and uh, nothing fits. They tell me that I turned completely around, and yet the coat didn't move. <laughs> you have so, a large wardrobe? Uh, well, I've got uh, about six sport coats, uh, two suits, and a uh, and corduroy knickers. I don't uh, wear <laughs> those know. often. But I'm having everything altered, okay? And I did six game shows last Sunday. I have no clothes, so I figured I'm going to rent a tux. Well, you look, you look very smart. I kind of like me in it. Why did you lose it? This <laughs> is very nice. I do. I feel when does the, uh, when do you have to like pay an extra Romero, day? What huh? time do you have to have it back? Uh, well, it's going to be too late. If I got it back to nine, I'd get four fifty back. But if I won't get it in until nine thirty tomorrow morning, it's going to be the definite forty two fifty. I see. So because I'm starting to sweat right now. You have to. Uh, so you can cross off the stain deposit right now. Yeah. You know what is interesting to me? I've rented Texas before. Is uh, who used them before you got them? You know, what, I put, what were they doing too? Well, I put my hands in the pocket. Now you know when it isn't sewed up. You know this sucker ain't a new one. You know what I mean? You know you got one that's been out. <laughs> so I asked the guy where this had been, and he told me, and I wrote that down. You have the history of the this tuxedo? tux right here that you're looking at has been to a bar mitzvah, two weddings. Incidentally, these are gas sterilized. He assured me of that. They don't just dry clean them; they gas sterilize them. And uh, the third, uh, fourth time I went out was a, a sailor who attended his class of 1968 high school reunion, which possibly explains the Band-Aid in the seat of the pants <laughs> and the uh, penicillin tablets in the pocket. And they would. <laughs> but uh, they, they do. They, now, they the shoes... They keep a record of these, don't they? Yeah. The shoes, obviously, are not new. You can see those have got a few miles on them. <laughs> I figure if you can't read the... Uh... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I I love that commercial. It's my favorite the, the, one. Dr. Schultz, where people just yeah. 
Fall down. They don't fool around no. with it. They're not so subtle about that commercial. These are wacko. Puey on those. You know, no, this, uh, could make, this could make an interesting premise for a, for a TV show. A uh, guy goes in and rents a tux and then starts to think, where has this been? And then you do a series of flashbacks with this. And you go to the sailor to his high school reunion. You go to the bar mitzvah. You go to the wedding. And you show... Listen, I'm doing a new one uh, starting this fall. If it doesn't work, can I get back to you on that? I think that. <laughs> Don't you see possibilities in that? Yeah, I think it would be. Uh, I think it would be interesting. Sure. Uh, I'm. I'm. I'm delighted just to be working. So anything, a new idea to me right now is sort of, you know, in the right. old ear hole and out the other, yeah. as they say. Do you feel um, when you put a, put a tuxedo on? Do you feel more sophisticated? Do you feel? more debonair, a little, a little bit different? Well, yeah, I said I felt like Cesar Romero. I should go to an opening or something tonight with this. You it's really a shame uh, to, to have this and, and to spend the big the bucks the night and the, just go home and watch the 10 o'clock news. I think maybe I'll go to Ralph's and shop. <laughs> and, you know, uh, out here, nobody would probably even turn around and look at you. That's the problem. No, there's, I might drive through Beverly Hills or something. You got or to go to the farmer's market. Have you got a date after the show tonight? No, but uh, go to the could, farmer's market. You could get lucky on the summer You could go control a little bit. <laughs> Done a lot of that. How is your... Uh, that, this may not be a proper question to ask, but we know each other fairly well. Sure. How is your uh, romantic life uh, at the present time? On a scale of ten? Yes, that's... Uh, About a minus six. That man. <laughs> Just not going well. Well, I told you... I'm, I don't know what I'm looking for anymore. I've tried just about everything. I think the last time I was on the show, I was sort of hoping of uh, f fantasizing about maybe a woman with a few rings around her trunk that liked meatloaf in the 10 o'clock news. Um, now I've You're sort of changed my of thinking. Life, right? Have you been dating, well, this may not be proper either, but younger girls? Um, well, yes. Uh, it, it, it isn't hard to be younger than I am, really, uh, and still be able to date. Um, I mean, would you say young ladies in their late 20s? Well, anybody between, say, uh, 18 and 30 uh, mm. is generally what you call your short-term relationship. Oh. With me, anyway. Um, that's your, a lot of uh, Gucci stuff and, and gold gifts. I'm really more into sterling silver, and I find that... Uh, <laughs> women that hit 35 are really into Indian jewelry and, and macrame and bags. You, know. you save a few dollars. Yeah. Though, yes. mm -hmm. And nice, I don't... Nice set of aluminum cookware or something oh, yeah. like that. Or, you, you know, you, uh, uh, you can get invited to Tupperware parties and all kinds of stuff. I, uh, have you ever gone to one of these places? Uh, Singles bars? Well, they have groups, you know, for people who have been through a marriage and, and they get together. Well, there's a lot of them. Parents without partners. And right. There's a, yeah. I, as a matter of fact, uh, I, I went to a, a party. It, they're awful. Aren't they bad? Yeah, because they're all losers. You know, and, you're, and, and you feel like one, too. I don't mean to criticize those people because I have, you know, problems of my own. But uh, I don't think it's much fun to sit around and talk about bedwetting and sucking your thumb and stuff. And uh, <laughs> hear a lot of God knows I tried stories. <laughs> Uh, I'm really, you know, a lot of those, huh? Yeah. God knows that's I'm right. I'm really not into that. Uh, You're right. I, I really like... Uh, uh, well, you have a lady on your staff here who I think I find very attractive. Talking about Jenny again? Jenny Fosdick. Yes. Yeah. Are you still pursuing? Well, mind your business, Nosy Parker. But <laughs> you, I, uh, you brought it up, and she happens to be on our staff. I know. And I feel like kind of a father figure with our staff. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I thought maybe with the tux I'd make my move a little later uh, after the show. Well, you may, you may pay off your forty two fifty tonight. Yeah. Good for you. But you have uh, nothing serious at this point in your life. No. It's hard. When you're, when you, you know, when you work like, well, you, you work like you do. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, three, four days a month? Uh, <laughs> no, that's right. cool. That's, well, that's cool. That's cool. That's cold. That is cold. No, I'm delighted. That's that cold. That's called a cheap shot. No, I didn't. No, I, Lord, no, listen. More or anything. I want to tell you, I'm, I'm actually an afterthought. I wasn't what you called book three weeks ago for the show. You were kind enough to come in at the last minute. Uh, yeah, I was. I think to Robert Redford or Burt Reynolds, one of those guys uh, 
canceled out at the last minute. And of course, uh, Freddie wanted a leading man type, so right. he called me and I was available. <laughs> um, I figure any time you can make this kind of money sitting down, you got to take it, you know. That's and right. uh, whether you're a guest or a guest host. Yeah, what's you like best? You, you, you sat here. I like, uh, I like them both. I like uh, guest, I think, for one reason. I think my right side's my best side. <laughs> Now, you'll notice there's a lot of times when I may be just uh, charming and not terribly funny, but I always make eye contact with you. That's right. You, you're I correct. never answer your question by directing it to Ed. Now, when you guest host, when I ask somebody a question, there's a lot of looking at a bad hairpiece and some tinted hair. Oh, they hair. turn right away. Yeah, they give you a, yeah, well, I think, you know. And well, you uh, do. You maintain that. Yeah, I look right at you. One-on-one -on -one relationship. Yeah. So from that standpoint, I like America to see the right side. Now, for the big bucks... Um, <laughs> I'd rather sit in the chair. Sit over here. It's much more prestigious. Mm -hmm. I have people now, uh, well, I've done it twice this month. That's true. Uh, and then I hosted the show twice, too. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> it's the tuxedo uh, that does that. You think I, you're working a club I somewhere. I feel like, it, you know, right. these guys, you see a picture. There's a picture in the trade. Uh, the trades for the folks out there in America are our own little uh, actors and performers magazines that we read, and they're always about three weeks behind in everything. And there are people who have ads of themselves in tuxes. Most of them are singers, and they're from Philadelphia. And there'll be, there'll be a picture like this. And it'll say, <laughs> you know, Bobby Vim is back. <laughs> Where the hell has he been? <laughs> I mean, I don't who, even, is Bobby who is Vim? Bobby Vim? Right. And then in the one corner, it'll be personally managed by Darlene Fudge of Indianapolis and an agency out of uh, Tampa, Florida, you know. I like the ones who have those ads, you know, like that, but there's no name. Yeah. You've seen some, and you yes. don't know who the person is sometimes. You sit there and say, that's a wonderful ad. Yeah. Who is it? Yeah. They suppose that everybody knows them, but right. they don't. They'll so do they've a, just blown about five big Or a ones. big picture of yourself with no name that just says thanks. <laughs> to everybody. Yeah, and you don't have any idea. What were we talking about? I don't know, really. Uh, well, we talked about my See, when you life, the thing uh, about being the guest host, you don't have to listen. <laughs> well, that's you true. You see, or the, the host, you just sit here and people talk, and when they say, what are you talking about? You say, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Most I, of the uh, time, you don't know. You just ask them a question, you sit back and say, well, they, well they'll carry this for a while. I, do you have peripheral vision? I tuned out about 1970. <laughs> Did you? And from now, this, I'm a clone. The, the clone comes here and does this. and. I have trouble with my left eyeball. Uh, which, well, that's the first time that's ever been said on this uh, show. I think so. First time it's probably ever been said anywhere. What's wrong um, with your left eyeball? I can't, when I'm talking to somebody, read the notes when I'm guest hosting. Yeah. Like, you have little, uh, yeah, little questions there. I think it's fair to, to tell. Sure. It's, uh, I mean, uh, this isn't just, it is spontaneous. Yeah. You have no idea what I'm going to say or what I'm going to do. Nor do I care. Uh, <laughs> which is even more important. That's right. But uh, I can never find where the hell I am in the notes, and I know there's something that they want to talk about. Is there anything you want to talk about? Because I've very seldom look at him anymore. Um, you gonna oh, blow your? Not really, no. McLean's gonna do his famous uh, Kleenex trick. Go ahead, McLean. I, oh boy, oh, I look at that. That's starting to come off. I'm the tan is going. <laughs> um, well, I, your new show we mentioned in well, the beginning, we, yeah, in which you play a uh, a priest. A priest. I think it's. I th I find it boring when actors come out and just talk about their. Well, let's forget that then. What else you want to talk about? The hell with you. Wait a oh, minute. you want to talk about uh, that? No, I want to talk. No, it's going to be a good show, and it's on another network. We can't say the network. No, I we know can't. that much, but it starts with a C. <laughs> and um, it's only shown in Canada. Uh, no, I think it's going to be uh, Canada and my hometown, Bloomington, Illinois. Watch that get ahead. Now those are the folks from Springfield. I was just well, swell. Yeah, beer. Uh, no, that's good country. I was just yeah, back there. I know it is. Uh, um, about two weeks ago. Oh, we're going to commercial. I better wait. Well, you seem pretty well burned out. I guess we might as well move along to our next guest. Well, listen. Uh, just give me the There's 421 and I'll here. slide down. We just burn them up, move them along, and you got out it. comes the next one. But you're going to be sorry you don't hear this story. Slap a lunge. <laughs> well, save it for another time. That's right. <laughs> we'll be back uh, with McLean's story <laughs> and lots of other things. <laughs> Aren't you a little old for paper dolls? It's a paper knife, like on TV. They say Pillsbury Frosting Supreme is so smooth and creamy, you can spread it with a paper knife. Paper knife? Let's see. Pillsbury whips Frosting Supreme 30,000 times. It's never too thin, never too stiff. It always spreads just right. See? It works. 
I'll say. Pillsbury Frosting Supreme. It always spreads just right. Even with the paper knife. Mmm, delicious. <laughs> I have, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Bill Kirkenbauer. He was uh, on the show. My staff says he's completely nuts. He was on uh, one night with George Carlin uh, when I was recently in Europe, and uh, he was a young comedian. He appeared on the show. Uh, he had won first prize in a citywide competition among all the new comedians who are currently working in places like the Improvisation, the Ice House, the Comedy Store. And he did a whacked out crazy routine. It's not your typical normal, I'm going to tell you a joke stuff. Uh, I'm glad you're in kind of a good mood tonight, Friday night mood. Would you welcome, please, Bill Kirkenbauer. Bill. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to start out by doing a couple impressions right now. Uh, my first impression is that of a Los Angeles garbage truck at 7.30 in the morning. you're waiting for, though. You're waiting for the typewriter impression, aren't you? Huh? Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> A typewriter. You know, um, I like to listen to noises. There are a lot of strange noises in the world if you take time to listen to them. Uh, does anybody know, for example, what the most hated instrument in the world is? Violin. No, no. Accordion is number two. Bagpipes is number one. I don't dislike the bagpipes. I just think it's kind of a weird instrument. What gets me is somebody had to invent the thing. A guy had to say to himself one day, well, let's see if we can invent some sort of an obnoxious musical instrument. <laughs> Something real disgusting. <laughs> let's see what happens if I blow on a vacuum cleaner. <gasps> million dollar man at a discotheque doing the bump. widen my comedic horizons right now by doing a little ventriloquism, but uh, I haven't got a lot of money, and I can't afford a real good dummy, so kind of bear that in mind. <laughs> Why don't we understand each other? 
Uh, this is Herman Gibner. Herman's a little bit different than you, than you and I in that uh, he was born without a body. <laughs> and, huh? Oh, Herman likes you guys. He thinks you're really neat. He wants to sing a song. You want to sing a song? Okay. Maestro? She'll be coming around the mountain. She comes. She'll be round the when she comes. She'll be round the when she'll be round the she'll be round the when she comes. Take it, Herman! Get down and boogie! the mountain when she comes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, Herman, you can't have a body. <laughs> Every time when we get done with the act, he thinks we can have a body because we make a lot of them. You can't have a body. <laughs> Besides, what would you do with a body if you had one? <laughs> ah! <laughs> So what do you want to do now? <laughs> Since there are a lot of uh, visitors to Southern California, I'd like to give you a little preview of what you might see if you go to Disneyland. This is my impression of the Matterhorn roller coaster ride at Disneyland. That'll be an E ticket. Thank you. His name is Bill Kirkenbauer, and I'll tell you, with the, with the condition the world is in now, with all the crazy things going on, it's, it's nice to have somebody like that, have a little madness once in a while, just out and out straight madness. He's great. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Find a stain? Discover today's trigger spray and wash. Tough stains? Discover today's trigger spray and wash. A lot of stains? Discover the economy refill for today's spray and wash. And discover the special three-way action of today's spray and wash. It penetrates tough stains, breaks them up, and floats them out in the wash. Make tough stains disappear. Discover today's spray and wash. Trigger, refill, and aerosol. My next guest is, as they say, a very talented gentleman. Man of the theater and the opera, Charles Nelson Reilly is. One play he directed entitled uh, Paul Robeson opened last night in London, starring James Earl Jones. Another play he directed, The Bell of Amherst, starring Julie Harris, will be touring throughout the country this summer. And next week, the Verdi Festival begins in San Diego, and he's going to be directing La Traviata. That's quite a cross, uh, quite a, that's wonderful. <laughs> I was gonna say that's quite a cross section, and I couldn't get the words out, but they weren't very good words anyway. Would you welcome Mr. Charles Nelson Reilly. How are you? We'll discuss all of this. Well, okay. well, well. Look well, you me. didn't know it was that kind of an evening, I right? I certainly didn't. Do you have a feeling you might hear some tuxedo stories now, too? Might just well. 
You just came in. <laughs> what? You came in. Jetted. Jetted, Jetted in Chicago? I just want to tell him, gas sterilization is very dangerous. <laughs> I know a man to Sportsman's Lodge, the third dance, he went down like that. <laughs> just, you know what I mean? You're sitting here now, but if you get a headache around 11 or 12, tank it all. Because you know otherwise I mean? the whole thing is yeah. paperized. See, uh, this is my own. Everything is my own. Yeah, well, you look great. Well, you know what I mean. And it's probably the whole thing together is 3980. So you see what I mean? Except the socks. Is right. that your name tag for camp right. or what? Oh, for come the on Broadway now. shows. Oh, what when do you you're mean in now? a Broadway show, they give you a name tag on your socks, so when they wash them, they'll know whose it is. So I have two drawers of 842 pair of black socks, <laughs> all with my name tag. These are some of the so inside they go, stories they that all... could kill a long series. That's right. When they, in other words, when they go out from the theater, all the performers' socks go out. Oh, you can't take the different... socks home, because if you come with the yellow the next day, they, they go crazy. You're ruining the play. Oh, I you see. Know, the play stinks, but the socks are going to make it better. Right. It's all black. <laughs> and if everyone has black socks, then there's no problem. I wore black socks for 19 years. Just black socks? Just black socks, a little white tags. Ah, oh, sweet. <laughs> Not so bad. How have you been? I'm fine, thank you. You look good. I'm all right. I'm, uh, you know, I was on a plane last night over, uh, jet, you get jetted in. Chicago, I came back early this morning. <laughs> the twitch doesn't show, does it? <laughs> you have a little lag, is no, it? No, But we're flying, we're coming, I love to fly. I really do. I love to fly. Do you really? Don't hit it too hard. <laughs> Stress and strain, you see, it's uh, gonna cost you. So anyway, we're over, Colorado River, you know, uh, and it's about yes. 1 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. And outside the left side of the plane, there's the most beautiful electric storm one could ever see. <laughs> but the orange, the lightning things, do you know what I mean? What are, the, what are they called, doctor? The, the, the lightning bolts. Good, it's excellent. The lightning bolts were orange coming right down to the earth. Uh. Suddenly, everyone is up in the aisles. No one is reading People magazine or playing cards or anything. All on the left side of the plane. <laughs> Captain Morton gets on, it's Captain Morton. There's an electrical storm coming over on the left side of the plane. Now, we knew that eight minutes ago, <laughs> which makes you nervous. The cabin is lighting up the like he's just lighting up. The, those, no one has a night, a, light, a night light on. So there's a lightning going like crazy, but it was fine, we passed through it. But those things, I never worry about those things. I had, you, are you fatalist if it happens? No, it happens. I, I, everything's fine for a while. Right. You don't walk around with all these tags for nothing. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm okay for a while. But there was one landing. I'll never, I could hold on to this? Sure. Thank you. There's one. It's already stress and strain. It's already $4 on mine alone. But anyway, I'm coming in until uh, about 12 years ago when they started jets. Yeah. I mean, they started, you know, the jets. Sure, I remember them. And, <laughs> and we're coming into Charlottesville, West Virginia, where I directed a play. Uh -huh. Now we get in this plane. Did I you can't... ever direct plays with more than one people in them? I notice you have Paul no, Rosen. No, there were four and... in that. Yeah, oh, there were four. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, but right. it, it stinks at Christmas because you know you get one present and that's it. <laughs> but you know. Excuse me, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, plan. that's okay. So you're in Charleston, West Virginia. Well, we're on the plane. It was that plane. You're not supposed to ever go on. I know I'm not supposed to stay. No, today. don't say it. Don't. I'm not saying it. All right. I've been <laughs> guests for you know, years. I know. You know how it goes. But anyway. <laughs> They say we're boarding on another gate, and you don't know that. And then when you get on the plane and you see she has the name of this airline on her hat, and you get a little nervous because that's what it didn't say in the ticket. They told you to board over there where they had another sign. You're going, oh, bye. Then up on the plane, it goes, this name is on you. Everyone gets a little nervous. Can I have a Manhattan, please? You know, right away, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. But anyway, we're going to Charlottesville, West Virginia <laughs> on a 707. And it's the beginning. This, this airline has just bought this plane. It's a big day for this airline. <laughs> the unnamed so, airline. Oh, of course. So we're going to Charlottesville, West Virginia, and the captain comes on about 10 minutes before the landing, and he says, uh, this is Captain Morton. Same pilot. Well, it's always Captain oh, Morton. I see. <laughs> and he said, uh, exact words, quote, Charlottesville is not equipped to handle jet traffic. So we'll be a little abrupt in our landing. Now, why didn't they tell you that at the gate? They don't you know, when you're buying the because paper? Because you wouldn't get on the plane. So it comes down like this. That's, I can work with music, it's fun. <laughs> it, it comes down like this. 
every cap. I was in 4D, the caps were in 60. The guys out of shake haste went to the back of the plane. Then you get, this is 12, 15 years ago, you get off in Charlottesville, West Virginia, International Airport. <laughs> and it's some guy's front lawn. And there's a cigarette machine, adorable, they had everything, and a phone booth. And it's the International Airport. I mean, there's no flags, nothing is blowing. There's no runway. The guy has a gravel path. Like that, huh? That's how it was. We're here. And she never lost her hat. <laughs> A wind that shine is a beautiful thing to see, no matter what you're seeing on. When it comes to my refrigerator, I'm a fingerprint expert. That's a wind that shine. After he's cleaned up, I clean up the tile. That's a wind that shine. Hey, it ain't cool if your chrome don't shine. That's a Windex shine. Windex with Ammonia D. It's a beautiful thing to see. I wish I could keep this bathroom bowl clean between scrubbings. Get your wish with me, Automatic Vanish. Huh? I help clean with every flush. Hang me in your tank. You'll see. With every flush, I swirl a detergent and deodorizer under the rim and throughout the bowl to help keep it clean and fresh between scrubbings. I get my wish. With every flush, automatic vanish for a cleaner bowl and a fresher bathroom between scrubbings. The Osayer hosts Chuck Mangione, Bonnie Tyler, Gary Buzzy, and more one half hour from now. Thank you, Doc. We're talking to Clint Stevenson. All right. I hear tell that you were robbed recently. I was robbed. I like to not be funny. No, but because I'm a, I'm, I'm a humorist. And I'm not a burglary. You were robbed. Uh, robbed? What's the difference? Well, they came in, they break and enter, well, and they took. Were, were, you, did you, were you burgled or were you robbed? Robbery is usually when somebody comes up with a gun. Oh, burglary no. Burglary is when somebody breaks in. This is when I came home in. and the screen was missing. Well, you were burgled. Among other things. That's a, that's a burglar on. Yes, yes. Well, I came home from work a couple of weeks ago. Is this out here? Yeah. Yeah. First of all, they think, you know, like, I have a lot of money. I have no money. You're, you have that man that you said you're going to, you have money all your life. That's wonderful. You deserve that. I spend a lot of money. I live in a limo. So you can't go with a rented thing in a limo. But if you got your own, you live in a limo. So anyway, I spend a lot of money, and he calls me this morning, he says, we're gonna have to take a loan. Oh, come on. Well, it's true. But I'll tell you, but it'll be all right, because I have a couple other things you didn't know about. So I can get those in, and you know, it'll be all right. But anyway. You, you weren't home. I weren't home, but they think you have, you, you, they think you have money if you're on television, you know what I mean? Sure. So, uh, like I have my rug put in the back bedroom. I have a back bedroom, it's this big. Oh, your, your carpet. My, your carpet. So, <laughs> that's my own, too. Oh, okay. You know, everything. everything. But anyway, the guy stands in my back bedroom, which is that big, and he says, oh, excuse me, but is this the master suite? <laughs> I said, it's a small back bedroom. What do you mean, master suite? That's the toilet, three by two, and it's the bedroom, nine by 11. They think Beverly Hills, you know, they get all carried away. So these guys came in. I came home. I say, guys, it could be girls. I don't know. I don't want to get letters of trouble. I'm just getting it over now. First, that per, near Colorado River store. Persons Unknown came in. Yes. I put the time at five, Johnny. Put the time at I five. I got home about eight. <laughs> I got home at eight, and I'm coming. I had two house guests, two wonderful women that I've known for years, and they had good things in the back room. Well, but anyway, so. a small back room. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, have women in the well, back room that don't have girl, good things Playboy in the back room. Club. I understand that. You said the Playboy Club, they have a girl who's going to take care of you. You that's said right. that, and I that went right by, which was wonderful. That's how sophisticated a tuxedo-type show can be. That's right. But anyway, <laughs> I came home. Were and the two just, women there when they were No, they were with me. Ah. See how it's thickening the yes, plot? Yes, uh-huh. And we came home, and the window by the screen, or the, the window, I'll try to get it straight, as I have to be in court. The window nearest the door, the screen was on the floor, but bent. Jan, jan, jan. No, no, no. Not, it didn't fall off like a wind or something, a bat or something, because I went through it in my mind, wind, bat. Yeah. You, no. you knew right off that it didn't. Oh, a big case. Right. And it was bent, and it was off, and so. That's a clue. Then there was a sting. As I turned to the front door, it was open that much, and I said to myself, I have been robbed, or burglarized, or whatever, you know, if it was whatever you say. right there. 
And I went in and the place was like a bomb hit it. Everything was take, uh, taken out and, the, you know, it's fun. So I call the police right away. It's funny because I've been calling the police to fire department. Well, that's been going on. Mm-hmm. See, when you buy your own stuff, you can get in a lot of trouble. So I called the police and they came right away. And this is true. Do you know what their names were? They were wonderful. It's wonderful police. Do you know what their names were? Captain Morton? No. <laughs> That's why he has his own show well, and we're sitting that. around in rented clothes. <laughs> no, this is true. Policeman justice and policeman laws. Oh, come on. Now. now, this is the thing. John Davidson, if you tell John Davidson everything, anything, he's like, you're kidding, are you kidding me? If you say to John Davidson, <laughs> with all the jewelry, if you say, John, two and two is four, and McLean has a lovely daughter, nine-year-old Jennifer, he'll say, you kidding me? <laughs> this is a lighter, John. He'll say, you kidding me? <laughs> but anyway, get the director. Have In other words, tape. you told him. Right, so I, that's their names, and you Justice can check. That's okay, Justice right, and Laws. Now, right. if you went to Norman Lear and said, what about two handsome guys, Justice and Laws? He'd say, nah, never yeah, would corn, be. corny. So anyway, he's going around there checking the fingerprints with that black powder, and the stuff I have is stinks. The point I want to make is yeah. they didn't get anything because there's nothing there. I don't own anything. You know what I mean? There's no painting, there's no furs, and no jewelry. So I'm going around looking, this, I have my one watch on, and there's nothing they can take. I have a TV set that's built in the wall, the house would be easier to take. Right. And leave the set. You can't move it. So they took nothing? They took nothing, because there's nothing really to take. How about your screen? I call in the morning, that's a good point. No, that screen, it doesn't matter. Right. But anyway, the point I want to make is, I was looking around, because I felt that there would be a sign on the wall saying, this job stinks, this hall is not one of the biggest, no hope diamond here, something. And there was nothing till a few minutes later, dun, 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 dun. Right. When I went into the toilet, they put my hairpiece in the toilet. <laughs> and I went, dun, 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 dun. That's the sign. So the other thing is I, I couldn't find my shoes tonight and the, and the black patent leathers are gone. Uh, so now we're looking for someone who has their own hair. I'll go slow if you're taking notes. Yes, I'm going to. Someone with their own hair, size 13, who's crazy about patent leather. No. <laughs> Aren't we silly? Yes. It's true. Now let me get this straight. That, the hair piece was in the John, is that in the right? John, in the John, upside down. Yeah. That's a wild no, the, the story. Other day, the, I'm glad right. everything is safe and you didn't get... Arrested. No, I... I it's but, luckily you weren't home. You see, that's when you can be dangerous. Then they I panic know. and who knows what's happening. But you feel I sorry for people have to do that. I have to do this know? commercial. Of course. We'll right. do this and Dr. Lennon Smith, <laughs> little baby doctor. Will do. Hey, a Pringles Beach Rare. Oh, oh. Hey, looks heavy. Can I help? Hi, I'm majoring in beach rafts. Get a Pringles beach raft free by mail when you buy four Pringles multi-packs. Get details and special certificates on display at participating stores. Find out how to get a free beach raft when you buy four multi-packs of Pringles. You can take away those old songs like My Sweet Adeline, Sweet Adeline. You can take away the way we hum at all those old pals of mine. You can take away those major chords and four-part harmony, but please don't take my gusto from me. me. If you don't have Schlitz, you don't have gusto. Brother, you don't have beer. Our good friend, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Lennon Smith is with us again tonight. His minute and a half television series is called House Call. It's syndicated health tips you see now in many parts of the country. Would you welcome, please, baby Dr. Lennon Smith. I'm going to get down here and talk to this young man. We've been doing this joke about Dr. Lennon Smith for so long on our show, saying little baby doctor. We thought just for the fun of it, we'd bring a baby doctor. What's your name? David. David, what's your last name? Adam. David Adam. How old are you, David? Five. You're five? You ever been on television before? 
Yeah, lots of times. <laughs> this probably is the high point, though. Uh, have you, have you done, done commercials? Yeah. Things like that? What are some of the products, you know, you've done commercials for? I don't know. What do you, was, it, was it a cereal, something like that? Or milk yeah. commercial? Yeah. Where do you live, David? You live out here in Los Angeles? No. Oh, where are you from? Where were you born? In California. In California. <laughs> you got any brothers and sisters? One, bro one brother. One brother. What's his name? Eric. Yeah. You go to school yet? What, what grade are you in? I'm just going into kindergarten. Kindergarten. You looking, you looking forward to it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're a nice young man. Thank you for being on our show tonight. You come back and see us again sometime? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, David. We'll be right back. My, you've certainly grown since the last time I saw you. We'll do this, then we'll come back He's and talk with the real Dr. Lennon Smith. Stay with the us. real. <laughs> There's never been a better time to be a woman. Things have changed for women. Well, to keep up with you, Kotex designed Kotex Light Days Panty Liners. Just right when a mini is too much. Whisper thin, oval, with three strips of adhesive to keep them secure. Kotex Light Days Panty Liners. Just right when a mini is too much. With three strips of adhesive to keep them secure. It's just one of the ways Kotex is keeping up with you. Doctor, what kind of, uh, we don't have as much uh, time as we'd like. What kind of complaints do you get from parents now during the summer? Are there special problems with kids in the summer? Rashes well, or whatever? Well, sure, you know, they, they can't find their doctor is one thing. <laughs> 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 On vacation, so right? Unless your kids get sick. Uh, there, there are all sorts of things getting overheated and getting bitten and uh, stung. It's little minor irritating things, but right. every once in a while a child gets very sick and you think, well, it's just the flu and it turns out to be appendicitis or something kind of nasty. And there is a test that it's, it's worthwhile that now that no. you bring it up. Uh, that uh, a surgeon invented and uh, to if tell you, if you have a yeah, well, well yeah uh, mm -hmm. if you have the flu it's you know it's the cramp and the throwing up and the and then you feel pretty good for a while maybe a couple of minutes then you throw up again or have a loose stool but if uh, and sometimes that's the the, the appendicitis starts that way so you mm -hmm. don't want to miss that because that's kind of nasty and can wipe you out uh, appendicitis is supposed to be a constant pain in the lower right side now, sometimes you can detect this by having the the patient usually a, you know say it's a mm -hmm. 5 10 16 year old kid uh, jump off his bed. Now, <laughs> if he jumps off his bed and lands on his uh, flat out like that, the appendix kind of goes boing, oh, and just really puts him on the floor. But with the flu, it doesn't put him on the floor. So that's, if you can get him to stand up and do that, <laughs> which, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a little way that you can, you know, get started. In other words, it, it'll be severe, but at least Yes, It'll yeah, it'll be boring because it's sort of like a whiplash in there. The appendix is inflamed and it's That's good because everybody one time gets those little things and usually it's a little gas yeah. bubble or something and you go, oh, yeah. the appendix mm -hmm. right away yeah. and it goes away. But I thought of something and I thought this would be a, a great uh, medium in which to help America dispel some old wives' tales. And I want to tell you a story about a, a woman, a grandmother, wrote me that uh, her granddaughter was living in California, uh, that, the, her, that the grand, that her son and her son and her daughter-in-law were allowing this girl, her granddaughter, who was about 13, <laughs> to uh, take a bath during her menstrual periods. And she wrote me this letter. And she said, as everybody knows, this is very dangerous because this is the way you get tuberculosis. <laughs> and I, didn't, I didn't know that. Did you know? No, no. no. And so uh, she said, uh, please write my son in California and tell him not to let his daughter take a bath during her periods. And then to sign some of them. And she said, P.S., don't tell him I told you to write. And I thought, um, he's going to get this uh, letter from yes, you. Yes, yes. Uh, dear sir, it's come to my attention that you're allowing your daughter to... <laughs> I don't know. So, but actually, what we found out, that there is a point to this. You know, right. through, every old wives' tale has sort of, there's a sort Something of a, a message, yeah. yeah. And it means that it's not so important when you're bathing, it's with whom you're bathing. <laughs> now, if you're sitting at the plug-in of the tub and you're faced with somebody with tuberculosis at the anti-plug-in... <laughs> And you're course, breathing on each other, sure, you're likely to get tuberculosis. So that's what she had in mind. So I wrote her this, with this information, and uh, she has now um, uh, sent her son that information. And, but it is better to sit on the plug end of the tub if you let the water running 
you're into uh, or both, uh, negative or both, ion or therapy, Or both face too. the plug. Yes, both face the plug. Well, Thank you. I didn't uh, Yes, that. Could I have you help me yes, in my practice? <laughs> what are some other myths? Oh, uh, there's a, well, there's a, here's a good little, uh, we're, we're finding some of these old remedies that we, you know, we thought the hypocrisy and all of these yes. things. Yes, well, there's a good one that maybe I can't remember if we've ever mentioned. Uh, in the middle of the night, there's an earache. Drugstore mm -hmm. is closed. You can call the doctor and he says, you know, call me tomorrow, give a couple aspirins and stuff. But uh, if, you, if you boil up an onion, it has to be a Bermuda onion, not the green, a boil, a boil big onion. Right. And take the core out, now it's soft and warm, and stick it in the ear. And this uh, plugs it up, and, and you know the, it's the air that was wafting over this painful eardrum that causes the pain. And you, uh, you of course, you're using aspirin and a lot of uh, you know comfort right. and love. And then this, but this stops the earache almost right away with most ear infections. It's an old French uh, remedy. The next day, you have to somehow get that thing out of there. <laughs> Which uh, we should, we should people that there happen to be young children. We're not suggesting you go out and stick onions in your ear. No, 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 no. Right. But it should, if you boil it first. Now, yeah. some people have stuck peanuts and things in there, and oh, then they start yeah. to grow and they swell up, and so it's going to be bad news. There's, but there's a lot of wonderful things. There's a. Uh, just the other day, I had some vitamin E capsules in my office, and the kid came in with poison oak, and, and she was, you know, had the usual calamine and stuff and scratching, right. and we opened up an E capsule and rubbed it on her wound, and then within five minutes, the, the itching had gone down. There are lots of so little all things. all those like, properties, they, they attribute to some work. of these yes. things. Mother Nature's provided the, the poisons in the earth. It's also provided some of the remedies, and I think it's sort of testing us out. People say, eat natural food, you know. Food is a natural food. Well, uh, you know, See, toast people foods natural. natural foods from organic foods from health foods. There are three different things. There are health yes. foods, and they're which all can be almost together. anything. There are organic foods, and there are natural foods. And they all sound great. All the advertisements are natural. Just if, exactly. if they have 10% of some natural ingredient in a food, they can call it natural. Yeah. But you think, uh, you know, we say to people, just eat what God put on this earth. Well, God put uh, rhubarb leaves and potato stems, and there's Poisonous toast mushrooms, stools, and it'll yeah. kill you. Well, I, I think what the message is, he's trying to eliminate some of the not-so-bright ones. That's right. So, uh, <laughs> I have a... I, I have a friend that um, uh, they love mushrooms, and so right. they're going to have steak that night. So he goes out and collects uh, what he hopes are mushrooms and not toadstools. And uh, so when he gets home, he says, I'm not too sure. So he takes a slice off each one, a teeny little slice, and eats this. If he doesn't have any sweating and funny pupils and gets weak and fainty, then he says, this is okay. So he cooks Isn't there a, a better way to determine yeah. that than to, <laughs> yeah. to get ill? Buy them at the store. It's yeah. much better. Yeah. yeah, that is dangerous. So you, you, it's possible to do some of these things. But there, there are a lot of old wives' tales that really make some sense. Not there's a, there's a aloe vera plant that you can put on things that really helps. But we have to cut away. Do we'll eat, come eat. right back. Rationalize. Thank you, Doctor. It's always fascinating. I hope you come back with us Thank often, you. really. Charles Nelson Riley and McLean, I understand that uh, you guys are going out together well, tonight. No. <laughs> Since you're a joke and laugh. No, yeah, well, no, the truth is, we, we're doing a big, big benefit concert. concert tonight at the Hollywood yes. Bowl. Ah. For the uh, Stain and Stress Foundation. That's right. <laughs> yeah. To wipe out gas sterilization. Right. <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> Harvey Corman, Lola Solana. Should be a big be night. There. Thanks for being with us. Yeah. And, and the weather is lovely. And say hello to Captain Morton for me. <laughs> yes, he's fine. Monday night, Bob Newhart will be here with Bernadette Peters, Susan St. James, Harry Chapin, Jay Leno, and Alan Funt. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Good night. <laughs>